All right, Alexander, let's talk about the panic with arms sales from, uh, from China to Russia. And uh, there is a panic, a big panic. So what, what, why do you think there is this panic? I mean, okay, they, they could be worried about the arms sales of, of China actually cranking up its production and getting arms, specifically drones is what I'm hearing, yes. to, to Russia. That's, that's one reason you have this panic. Uh, this could be a way to distract away from Bakhmut, perhaps. Uh, maybe this is a way to demonize Russia in preparation for an eventual... Con- uh, Russia, uh, China, demonize China in preparation for an eventual conflict. And um, another thing that I'm thinking is maybe this is a way to, uh, to keep everyone invested, in uh, in Ukraine as well, you know, you bring another villain into the plot, so you, know, you keep everyone <laughs> focused on Ukraine. By you know, people are tired of the old villain Russia, so you bring another villain in, and it, it you know spices well, things yeah. up a bit. You know, it keeps people focused and panicked about Ukraine. So, so what do you think are the dynamics involved yeah. with this with this panic about ammo from China too? I I, I China, think I drones, think every po- every point every point you've made is is valid. But I think that there is one overriding reason for the panic, and it perhaps it's a, it, it, it's a it's a panic that I think is probably going to build even further because the Chinese, even whilst they formally deny that they're planning to provide weapons to Russia, are giving increasing clues that they might consider doing it. But we'll come to that in a moment. But the reason for the panic, the ultimate reason for the panic. Is, is actually very simple because the whole Western plan in Ukraine is to exhaust Russia. It's not working, but that's been the plan. If China comes out openly, starts backing Russia, providing Russia with drones, providing Russia with uh, microchips, and they are, by the way, um, I'll just be looking at some of the statistics and um, imports of processes from China to Russia having, you know, soared. Um, If that happens, then the whole strategy of exhausting Russia has failed and failed utterly beyond retrieval. And at that point, the Western powers, the neocons, even the neocons know that they cannot win in Ukraine. They can't achieve the objective of exhausting Russia, defeating Russia in Ukraine, breaking Russia down, fragmenting it, breaking it apart, isolating China in that way. So this is why they're spooked, because, as I said, they know that if China comes in, um, that's simply not going to happen. And it scared them. And they're also, some of them, those of them that are more connected to reality, which not all of them are, it must be said, they know also perfectly well that, you know, if you start imposing the kind of sanctions on China that you've imposed on Russia, the economic blowback on you is going to be simply horrendous. It's going to be, it is going to be beyond horrific. And I think that's um, also, I think, making them nervous some of this talk from the administration that, you know, that they might impose sanctions on China, I think is adding to the sense of panic and nervousness, especially in Europe and especially in Germany, by the way. So I think that's the ultimate reason. But um, whether it happens, whether it is what the Chinese are going to do, I'm not absolutely sure. I agree if they do it, it will be drones. I mean, that's the one area which the Russians themselves have very openly spoken about and have identified as their weakness. They can supply themselves with tanks, with guns, with uh, um, artillery shells, with all of those things. The one thing they are lacking in are drones because they took a very, very long time to take drones seriously. When they started to develop their drones after the 2008 Georgia war, they went about it in a very overcomplicated uh, and uh, um, disorganized way. And the result is that the Russians are very, very short of drones. And they've had to buy drones from Iran. And I think they would be looking to buy 
other even more much more sophisticated drones from China which has them in abundance so I think that's what the Russians would be looking at the and as I said it's not so much the actual weapons that's scaring the West from China it's the fact that as I said they know that if they keep on supporting Ukraine Russia with China at its back can never be exhausted or worn down. What would uh, what would the West do to China if China does provide the drones? I mean, we hear them warning China constantly now. Don't do it or else. Don't do it or else. You're going to face this and that. They don't really say what they're going to do to China. I mean, sanctions, okay. We understand sanctions. But are they really going to sanction China in the way that they sanction Russia? Uh, talk about I think, a boomerang effect. I mean, that's not going to turn out well at all for uh, for the EU or for the US. But what, what could they realistically do to China? I think if they, well, well I mean, you know, they could, in theory, impose all the kind of sanctions that we're hearing about. I, I think there would, be, there would be immense resistance in Europe to doing it. I mean, uh, they, they impose sanctions on Russia. If you, if you go back a year, they did it in a very sly way. They um, were basically telling everybody that they weren't going to impose the sanctions that they did impose. So if you remember, if you, would, if you go back a year's time, they were saying, we won't disconnect Russia from SWIFT. We won't uh, uh, take sanctions against oil and gas uh, imports into Europe. We won't do these things, even though I think... It's now obvious that they were planning to do that all along. Um, they can't play that same trick again. And the European business community, which would certainly have opposed the sanctions to Russia if they'd known what they were going to be, if they'd been told in advance, this is what we're going to do, I'm sure that business groups would have come out and spoken out against them. This time, I think they'll be much more alert and they'll say, look, if you're going to uh, do this to China, then we're not just talking about a recession. We're not talking about long term economic problems. We're talking about the collapse of Europe's economy and a plunge in living standards, the like of which we've never seen. So I think there will be enormous resistance. But I think what you will see instead is the incremental sanctions escalator start to go up at a faster and faster rate. So what we will probably get is salami sanctions every couple of months, more sanctions against Chinese uh, mobile phone producers, for example, more sanctions against Chinese companies, more restrictions on what the Chinese can sell, things of that kind, the sort of things we've been seeing already, but tamped up at an accelerating place, with, of course, the Chinese taking counteraction. What would the count, do you know what counteractions the Chinese could take? Well, they've, all, they, they've already hinted, and I think they probably will. I think they're going to start, at that point, uh, uh, restricting... Uh, um, sales of some of their products probably to the West and you know people who tell me that you know they, China is an export machine not any longer by the way and um, China has already imposed its own sanctions on some Western countries they tried them out against Lithuania uh, a short while ago and they were very effective so I mean you know, uh, uh, you know the Chinese ha do have large numbers of um, weapons of their own, if you like, in sanctions terms, in their, in their toolkit, and they will use them. And, of course, the other thing they do, which, by the way, the Russians don't do, the West will undoubtedly be imposing sanctions on Chinese individuals and Chinese political leaders and Chinese business people and that kind of thing. And, of course, the Chinese will then retaliate. They've already shown that they are ready to do that. And given how important for Western businesses that is to maintain a position in China, 
well, it will be it will be it will be critical. I I had a discussion some months ago with somebody who works in the watch industry, the Swiss watch industry, and he he, he was telling me that he was asking around. Look, if we impose sanctions on China, which is to be very clear, our biggest single market by far. What happens then? Oh, I think that's the case for a lot of uh, U.S. companies or, or, or Western companies. I mean, absolutely across all absolutely all industries, yeah. all all absolutely. consumer goods. Absolutely, you I, see, I this is a fundamental any, anywhere from 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 Apple from from iPhones to Nike to I mean, China's become yeah. a huge market. It's an enormous market. And can I just make a further point here? I mean, this is a point which, again, I think people may not understand. I've been to China, and that was in 2017. Um, in Russia, when Western brands pulled out, the Russians found, without much difficulty, that they could replace them with their own domestic suppliers and they could bring uh, people from other countries, other places, the Middle East, the Far East to replace these niches. In China, <laughs> that would happen instantly. Any Western manufacturer or producer who pulled out of China, there are about a hundred Chinese companies <laughs> waiting to step in. I mean, I, I, I can say that. I mean, just just for a short time there, um, I could see the extent to which that was true. If you lose market well, not share only in China. Stand- if you lose market share in China, it's never coming back. Not only would they step in in China, but they would step in in China, and then there would be competition for, say, I know, I'm just going to pick a brand like Nike. I said Nike. Then there would be competition for 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 Nike across the across the globe because that Chinese exactly. brand would be you no. Know, it would be as it, good. It, its products would be as good. At about a fifth of the price. <laughs> I mean, because bear in mind something, you know, if you're Nike and you've lost one of your biggest markets, I mean, and, you know, you're facing all the other problems, you know, rising energy costs, all that sort of thing. You're up against the Chinese trying to sell, in, you know, across Asia, Latin America and wherever. Well, the Chinese, they have this gigantic market behind them, which already makes, ensures the profitability of their businesses. They have colossal economies of scale. And of course, because of their relationship with Russia, they have the energy thing sort of worked out. So you're absolutely right. You kind of saw that with with the sanctions in Russia with with cars in a way, didn't you? And Germany. I was looking at a chart the other day where it showed that China has, has emerged... This is coming starting from the the pandemic, going through the pandemic and through the sanctions against Russia. Through all this time period, China has has emerged to to be a bigger exporter of uh, yes of yes. passenger cars yes. than Germany. Yes, I mean, <laughs> who would have ever thought thought this? Well, indeed, and they're major now investors in the Russian car industry itself. Absolutely. You know, one of the things Americans um, read, should do if they want to understand the challenge that they face from China is go back in time and look at their own economy. Because China today, in so many ways, resembles the U.S. economy of the 1930s and 1940s. Yes, there are problems in China. China does have finance, does have economic problems, but they are principally concentrated in the financial sector and in the housing sector. Beneath them, there is this gigantic industrial machine, bigger than that of the United States and Europe combined, which can operate at phenomenal speeds. And just as the United States had a severe problems in the 1930s with problems that arose in its financial system, but its colossal manufacturing capacity meant that in the end it could overcome them and it could respond incredibly fast to any challenge. You know, build 30,000 tanks, 
They just produced 30,000 tanks, which is what they did in the Second World War. Things of that kind. China today has that same manufacturing industrial capacity with all the skills that go with it. Um, the engineers, the production designers, the project managers, all of that sort of thing. It has it in place and it can bring all that to bear incredibly fast. All right. Uh, yeah, let's let's end it. This is such a bad idea that they're oh. like they're you know lashing out at China. I'm just well, there's a very bad China idea. Deliver the, the the drones. I mean, what can you do? Yeah. Well, what you need, what you should do is try to find some way to bring this war to an end. The very fact that you know, well, as I said, I want to just say this. I think yeah, the that's... Chinese are sort of hinting that they are considering this idea. I I went through the Chinese position paper on their you know, what people are calling their peace plan, though it's not really a peace plan. And I noticed that it doesn't rule out, it, that the way it's constructed doesn't rule out the possibility of China supplying arms to Russia. The mere hint of that ought to be enough to tell people if there's any remaining doubt in Western capitals, well, this is the time to make peace. Let's get this war behind us. Let's pick up the phone to Moscow. Let's not bully and threaten and lecture the Russians. Let's ask the Russians, look, what is it you want? And let's see whether we can accommodate you in some way which doesn't amount to a total debacle for us. That's what diplomacy is, by the way. So it's time to do that kind of diplomacy because what the Chinese are basically hinting is, look, if you go on like this, we're prepared to do whatever we have to. And you can't win. So make peace. Yeah, that's how I, yeah, the position paper was China's last, last offer to the, uh, to, to the West to say, look, this is, this is your last chance before Absolutely. we, we jump in. Exactly. Yeah. That's my feeling as well. But they're not going to do it. Anyway, we know they're not going to do it. No. The Biden White House. No. It's no. I mean, it's like the Germans in the 1940s, the 1930s and 1940s. They're given, you know, lots of warnings about, you know, the fact that the United States was always there. And, of course, they didn't, they didn't see that. And exactly, as you said, they plunged in. <laughs> we know what the consequences will be. It looks, unfortunately, as if the Western powers, the neocons, are going to make that mistake as well. In no reverse gear, anyway. In no reverse gear, no. <laughs> okay. we'll, 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 we'll end it there. The Duran, uh, dot locals dot com. We are also on Rockfin. And go to the Duran shop, 10% off. Use the code. Good day. Take care.